wonderful people. Thank you all so very much for sharing your time with me. Um, I want to say good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're at. Um, this is a beautiful Sunday. I was looking outside and hearing the birds and um, seeing the sunrise today. It's just a beautiful Sunday for me. Definitely. And I pray that it's the same for you. Doesn't It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. We want to make sure that we are always thankful for yet another day to be better than we were yesterday. If you are a new subscriber to this community, welcome to this beautiful bunch of people. I believe you would find this to be a um, loving place and a safe space for you to share your experiences and or reach out to others who may be in need of a little help. I want to start today with the scripture from Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Present your request to God. This is a scripture that I have posted on the community board, letting you all know that I am more than willing to pray for you and your situation because I believe that someone has prayed for me and continues to pray for me. And um, this is what we do when we care about each other and the well-being of our brothers and sisters. Today, I want to talk about uh, an experience with a female narcissist. This will resonate, hopefully, with many of you who deal with this person as a sister, a mother, a niece, a girlfriend, a wife, a coworker. I'm going to talk about the extremely covert female narcissist and the patterns that you can see to point this creature out. I started with Philippians 4, 6 because I spoke with a beautiful person today who is a prayer warrior. Just so happened she had to deal with one of these creatures recently. And although she really doesn't have a full understanding of narcissistic abuse, she's learning um, for other reasons. Um, she's still felt something was off. She is a praying woman. And when we pray, even when we don't know or we can't see everything for what it is, we trust God. We give our lives to God. We submit our prayers and our thoughts to God. And we make our requests known. And so she prays in the morning, in the afternoon, and before going to bed. So prayer is her, is, is what her life is centered around. So with that, she, God is there with her. He's there with you. He's there with me. He's going to help us out of situations if we trust him. And that's exactly what he did for her. He moved swiftly. And this wasn't the first time. So God moved in swiftly to help her, to show her what she was dealing with, that in fact, this person is not a good person. And that was all she needed to know. But let me tell you about this person that she had to deal with. Oh, she is the most cute and innocent looking creature that you would ever lay eyes on this female narcissist or sociopath is quiet, seemingly meek from a distance, non-confrontational, but she does move about like a serpent. She watches, she chooses her prey carefully, and then she pounces quickly. She moves fast on their hearts with using what most of them use, a victim story. But in her case, when you look at her, you're thinking, oh my gosh, poor thing. 
She's a little petite thing. And of course she's being abused if she says she's being abused because although we say do not judge a book by its cover, that's what we do indeed. We don't judge or try the spirit by the spirit. We look at her and we think, oh my gosh, this poor little thing. She's such a pretty girl. She's so sweet and she's so quiet. And then we let our guard down. Because how could someone who looks this way, so who looks so innocent, be terrible? She could never do anything to anyone. So if she tells me that she's being abused, then my gosh, she's being abused. She's been mistreated everywhere she goes. Poor thing. How is she living? How is she getting by? She's moving about everywhere. She just needs someone to care for her, to provide something for her, to show her love, and then she'll be okay. This is what the serpent would like for you to think. The serpent uses the shell, the vessel that it has taken over to <clears throat> woo you, to trick you. And to get you caught up in situations that sometimes could cost you a very high price, including your life. You see, this very covert serpent is one who is most likely to put people in situations to where they second guess their mental state. Something's wrong with me. It must be me. It can't be this beautiful creature. There's no way. And so people get caught up in the cover of the book. They're judging it for what it looks like on the outside. And they're not taking a long look at the actions that are taking place. Because she moves about just like the others but we make excuses for her. We try to rationalize it. We try to think maybe it's me. I'm just seeing things. Surely not. Surely she cannot be as evil as I'm feeling she, like she is. And so she's allowed to go about and to quietly bully everyone to take whatever she wants. Get her way in every situation. Lie her way out of a court battle make you think that you're the crazy one therefore you hand over everything that she wants and so her patterns again are the same she moves in quickly she comes with the story of victimhood she <clears throat> goes through the same cycle of abuse with you but it's so subtle. Her poison takes a long time to work through your system. If you are in, um, if you are a family member or in a romantic relationship with her, especially. It takes a long time to work through you. But once it does, it almost paralyzes you. She love bombs you quietly discreetly she keeps you isolated to herself by being the poor little victim and praising you for helping her out of her situation then she begins to devalue you in very small ways by questioning the moves you're making or becoming defensive just ever so slightly when you suggest something for her to do something different she makes you think that, oh, no, I'm not the problem you are or this other person is when you confront her about the little things that you're noticing. And then when you get too close, she doesn't let anyone get too close to, to, to see her for exactly who she is. She's so cute. She's so sweet. And she's so innocent that she could move on to the next thing overnight. And so as soon as you start to sort of catch on and feel like, okay, this little cutie 
is not as cute as I thought she was. And you're starting to question her behavior and the way she moves about. And you start to see this serpent sort of change. And at that moment, that serpent will just ghost you. They'll leave. They'll slither on to the next person they've been working on. They've love bombed someone else and they can get people in a matter of days. They don't have to necessarily work on someone while you're together. Once you show them that you're sort of catching on, it could take them a week at most to have someone else in their lap trying to rescue them from their situation. And there you go. They move on in on that person into the next situation quietly. They were a victim of whatever it is that you did to them and all of these other people, but they don't tell the new person about everyone else, just a couple of folks and a couple of situations here and there. They want to appear as normal and as sweet as possible. And this way they don't have to work for anything. They always eat. They always have somewhere to lay their heads. And as soon as that situation figures them out, they move on to the next. This creature is very dangerous. And if you are not aware of narcissism, the traits, and how they move about. And most importantly, if you are not praying, this person can take full advantage of you and leave you for death. It depends on how much of a connection you make with them. But many times, this creature drives someone to suicide, especially her male partner. And this is why I thought it was important to point it out, to connect with men who have to deal with this. No man can go anywhere and tell someone that this tiny, sweet, loving creature has done anything bad to them. And they usually pick bigger men so that his story appears to be even more ridiculous. And so what does he look like as a man to say, this woman is abusing me? People are like, well, my gosh, look at how big you are. What do you mean she's abusing you? What could she actually do to you? If you feel it's that bad, just leave. But we all know it's just not that easy. That's not how it works because they put their hooks into you. And we know about the trauma bond. And so this man is struggling. He's seeing the demon for who she is, but he can tell no one. And if he leaves, she's going to make him pay, but she's going to do it quietly so that no one will ever look at her as the evil one. They will always look at him as the big bad man. But behind closed doors and where no one can trace her, she's telling him horrible things about himself. She's She knows that he has a little bit of an issue with anger. And so she's doing little subtle things to get that worked up. So she can say, look, he came after me. He tried to hit me. He's so aggressive. He, his anger is not under control and I don't know what to do. Help, help, help. I need to get away. And so someone helps her to escape. This man loves her. He does. This was the woman he chose to be with. And so he chose to give her everything. And she just leaves and tells everyone of how terrible he is, how he tried to hurt her and the children. And because we do judge books by the cover, we look at her and we say, poor thing, what can I do to help you? Let's go to court. I'll help you pay for the attorney. We can take him down. He doesn't deserve 
to have you or your children. And there you go, society blinded by this beast, by the outside, not looking at the dark inside, blinded, handing her everything, driving this man into complete insanity. You guys, if you are not praying, let me invite you to pray. Because when you don't know what else to do, you stand firm and you watch God work that thing out. Like I was telling you, the beautiful soul that I know, she didn't know a whole lot about the situation with this lady. She couldn't identify narcissistic traits, but she was a praying woman. And so that coworker who's going around about, she's so cute. She's so calm. She's so meek. Telling lies about you, setting you up, getting you in trouble when you didn't even do anything. But because you're not as cute as she is or as quiet and, you know, seemingly caring, then they're going to choose her story. But not if you're praying. Not if you're bringing in help that she cannot beat. Sometimes we cannot fight these demons on our own. We need a help, a higher help. One that is much stronger and that is from our creator. Maybe she's in your family and the family members don't believe you because you've always been vocal and running your, I mean, not running your mouth, but you've been vocal about issues and always standing up to everyone. And so she goes and tells them that she doesn't know what the problem is. Why do you see her this way? Why are you behaving this way? She only wants to help you and to, to love you. Can they help her? And then you become the bad guy because you're not falling for it. You're not dealing with it. You don't want to put it up. So you look like you're the one who's the aggressor. Or maybe she's your friend telling your other friends or your family members about you. About how you just left her out on her own to fend for herself. She thought you were her friend. She thought that you cared, but she immediately knew that you didn't. She's the one that can tell anyone that something is wrong with you, that you need help. And people believe her. This beast without prayer can completely ruin your life. This beast can have you killed or can have you to cause you to kill yourself if you do not have the help of God. So. I invite you all to join me as I pray for you and you pray for me and we pray for each other because what we are dealing with sometimes is so covert that even the best of us can't see it immediately. You always need to stay awake and stay aware. And the way to do that is through prayer. Remember, Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious about nothing. Take your time to get to know people. Look for the signs. Am I saying to be paranoid? No, we don't want to be paranoid, but we definitely want to pay attention. We're using wisdom now. We're not just jumping into situations. I hope that this message was helpful for you. This is what was on my heart this morning because as I watched this serpent move and I could see it for what it was, I just quietly stepped back and waited because I knew that God would reveal it for reveal it to the people who needed to see it. And that's another thing. Don't engage with it. Don't reach out to it. If you feel any type of hesitation when dealing with someone, just step back and wait. You don't have to be, there's, there's no rush. They're going to be there. And if they're not, then it wasn't meant for you to talk to them anyway. And that's okay. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Soak up the sun today and love on the people who love you and love them well. Take care.